I just want to give a short message to all people in Turkey is that you have a wonderful country and myself but also my colleagues from different political parties from different countries in Europe we care deeply about the future of Turkey and that is why it is so important for us to draw a line when fundamental principles like violations of the rule of law erosion of democracy human rights and fundamental freedoms are at stake I think we say that it should be, uh, we cannot negotiate at the moment because the conditions for that is not fulfilled uh, because of the internal situation in Turkey, uh, the question of uh, judiciary, uh, there are many people in prison and all that and therefore there are a lot of conditions for further membership negotiations but that, but that can might be changed relatively fastly if uh, Turkey fulfills more the conditions for the rule of law and democracy. Well, I think it's important to understand that taking the decision to suspend the negotiations on the accession of Turkey to the EU is a decision that nobody takes lightly. Uh, it has been one of the hardest things I've had to decide here in the European Parliament. But this is not only about what we think can help or not help. It is about principles that have been violated by the constitutional changes in Turkey and we said this from the outset we said if this package gets adopted unchanged it will make Turkey unqualified to meet the Copenhagen criteria and to continue to engage in the accession talks. So this is also a matter of credibility. We have issues in the EU with violations of the rule of law. Think about countries like Hungary, Poland. So it is not possible for us not to adhere consequences to our principles. I don't know what anti-Turkish lobbies are. I consider myself a friend of Turkey, a friend of the people in Turkey, and I have not been lobbied on this by anyone. Uh, negotiations are stopped since uh, the uh, state of martial law this uh, was stopped, and the condition for that to recover the negotiations are not there yet. And here we ask the Turkish government to change its policy internally in the question of the rule of law and so on, and then we can talk about uh, newly about that. It is not said that we should, for, uh, should step forever the negotiations. I think that's an important uh, differentiation we have to take. I've engaged with a number of stakeholders, representatives of the Turkish government, of NGOs, but I make up my own mind. And look at the um, readings of the Venice Commission on the impact of the constitutional package. Look at how many journalists are in prison. Look at how many bureaucrats have been fired. We don't question the rights of the Turkish state to bring to justice the perpetrators of the failed coup, but we think that the reaction has gone far overboard and that there is actually a systematic eroding of the rule of law, that there's no respect for a separation of powers, that the judiciary is no longer independent. These are the most fundamental issues when it comes to an erosion of the rule of law and has nothing to do with any lobby. It has to do with the facts on the ground and I know that people in Turkey are well aware of this. Also, the Council and the Commission do not negotiate. The negotiations of the, of the Commission for membership are, are stopped. There is no negotiation since two years or whatsoever. And uh, on the same side, for sure, we should continue in other policies with Turkey. Not in this membership negotiations, because the conditions are not fulfilled for that, but in all the other questions, I believe we should have uh, good relations to Turkey uh, because of common interests as a NATO partner in fighting terrorism, and uh, also in uh, economic questions and therefore uh, this is also only a suspension present but a suspension about the negotiation for membership not in the other questions well the message from the european parliament that the negotiations have to be suspended is crystal clear and i wish that the commission and the governments of member states would be as clear and less cynical because with the deal on migration we have essentially allowed Turkey to take the responsibility of sheltering three and a half million Syrian refugees. And we need to thank Turkish communities, Turkish authorities, Turkish NGOs for all the work they're doing. But 
do people in Turkey like this deal? Are they happy with this? I think it is actually a cynical outsourcing of Europe's own problems where we don't always see that governments of member states are meeting their end of the deal by, for example, relocating people that are refugees in Turkey and that should come to Europe. So indeed, I think that there is a double standard on the part of the member state governments and the Commission, but not on the part of European Parliament because we are clear about when principles are violated and we do not think that self-interest should make us change our minds. I think it's important uh, that uh, they stop to have uh, these imprisonments in unproved cases that thousands and thousands of people are put into prison, uh, uh, taken out of universities and so on and so forth. So it's really the classical question to, of, uh, of the democracy and the rule of law and minority rights in that country. What is very, very urgent is that the rule of law is respected and restored where it's being destroyed in Turkey. And that is not in the interest of us here in the European Parliament. It is about the future of Turkey and the people in Turkey themselves first and foremost. But what we can do is draw the line where we think that the principles we'd, we've agreed, the Copenhagen criteria that are prerequisites for uh, accession no negotiations, when those are violated, that we actually draw the line. That is in our power, but it's up to the authorities in Turkey and the people in Turkey to design their state and their governments and their uh, rules and laws the way they believe is fit. What we can do is say where our lines and principles are crossed, and unfortunately that has happened, and so the suspension of the accession talks has to happen.